No political issue stirred more heat and passion in the 2016 presidential race than border security and immigration. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some... Outrage over Trump's remarks were widespread. Some people called him a racist, said his campaign was a joke. But Trump's promise to build a wall on the border and deport millions struck a chord and helped put him in the White House. From the time the brash billionaire announced his candidacy, the Texas Tribune endeavored to get beyond the heated rhetoric. To expose the sometimes heartbreaking reality of the U.S.-Mexico border, to understand why people and dope keep pouring across it, and to get to the bottom of what we in Texas and the United States are doing and what we're not doing to stop it. We'll take you to the murder capital of the world, to the most heavily crossed patch of the U.S.-Mexico border, to U.S. drug treatment facilities, and to the heavily unregulated Texas workplace. We begin this international journey in the region that is sending more migrants per capita by far than any other the violent Northern Triangle of Central America. Technically, everyone in El Salvador is kind of walking on graves. Todas partes pasan por aquí, por México. Van de niños, adolescentes, adultos mayores, me ha tocado ver. ¿Por qué me vine de Honduras? Por necesidad, por darle una vida mejor a mis hijos. All the violence, the starving, really we don't want to suffer anymore, and so we are immigrating. Han resultado prácticamente cuatro delincuentes terroristas fallecidos. Todos pertenecen a la pandilla MS. Hemos encontrado una UCI, eh, dos pistolas y un revólver. <laughs> We found ourselves in a place where uh, we had to decide to die or to leave. I decided to leave. The biggest apprehension figures on our southern border these days don't involve Mexicans. Their numbers have been dropping big time. The largest increases have been coming from somewhere else, and that biggest somewhere else is Central America. Mexico is just their stepping stone, and Texas is the first stop for almost 90% of them. In the spring of 2016, the Texas Tribune went to southern Mexico and to the violent epicenter of the Northern Triangle, El Salvador, to see who's coming across our border and why. Por las pandillas. Es que nosotros corremos peligro porque mataron a mi hermano enfrente de nosotros. Entonces, si nos han amenazado que si estamos en el país, nos van a matar. Once they leave Central America, getting through Mexico brings its own challenges. Al otro lado del río, pues ahí nos asaltaron, nos quitaron todo nuestro, lo que traíamos, 2,143 pesos. Pues no nos dejaron nada. Gracias a Dios que no hicieron nada ni a mi esposa ni a mi niño. Uno cargaba una pistola y el otro con, con un machete. Y les quitaron todo su dinero, todo, los celulares. Lo revisaron todo, nosotros también. A mí me sería, me revisaron. Me tocó levantarme la blusa. The people we encountered were fleeing the twin evils of crushing poverty and staggering crime rates. That's particularly true in El Salvador, where warring street gangs gave the country the dubious title of murder capital of the world in 2015. Many of the victims end up here in San Salvador's central morgue. Fresh bodies from the streets go to the Department of Pathology. The ones that are badly decomposed are dumped in mass graves or in need of DNA analysis, those remains come here to the Department of Forensic Anthropology. They try to find out what happened to the victims. We have seen a lot of decapitations, a lot of the dismemberments. They have had multiple wounds all over their body. And so where it's not just quick cutting off the head, sometimes they are stabbed a lot of times. Uh, they're hacking off their limbs. So it's a little bit of a slower death. 